1999 work, The Christ Conspiracy, quote, but the future is now, and the maneuvers are being unveiled. As far as Christianity's role in this new age, Carpenter states, quote, Christianity, therefore, as I say, must either now come frankly forward and acknowledge its parentage from the great order of the past, seek to rehabilitate that, and carry mankind one step forward in the path of evolution, or else it must perish. There is no alternative. Despite the vilification of the so-called New Age movement, the fact is that we are entering into a new age. The age referred to in the Gospel tale is that of Pisces, and through contrivance and duplicity, coercion and slaughter, the fish god Jesus, the Piscean solar avatar, has indeed been with us, but now it is the close of the age, and his time is over. As Hancock says, we live today in an astrological no man's land, at the end of the age of Pisces, on the threshold of the new age of Aquarius. Traditionally, these times of transition between one age and the next have been regarded as ill-omened. Ill-omened verily as the ongoing destruction of the earth and the endless warfare over ideology will indeed produce the Armageddon so long awaited and planned by those who cannot live for today but must look towards an afterlife. By realizing the cultural unity revealed behind the Christ conspiracy, however, humanity can pull together and prevent this fall to create a better world. 75 years before Zeitgeist's main source Acharya S. penned that admission, the former president of Theosophy, Annie Besant, wrote something almost exactly the same, quote, The equinox will reach the sign of Aquarius, coinciding the great cycle of influence. We can indeed hope to put a complete end to all the influence of the past cycle, with its tyranny, slavery, war, and cruelty. This is one of the great transitional epochs, and the karma before humanity as a whole, and to every group in particular, is to reform itself from slavery, female subjection, war and cruelty, and establish a civilization based on humanness and interest in spiritual matters. New Age author Gail Fairfield explains what is expected for the supposed upcoming age of Aquarius. She states, quote, The sign of Aquarius is the sign of focused concepts. It concentrates intently on developing its ideas and then applies them to the betterment of humankind. It has talent for rapidly correlating all the information available into a political, ethical, spiritual, technological system. Aquarius creates optimal features for individuals and for humanity because it needs alternatives, possibilities, and something to move towards. Overall, Aquarius is a reformer and visionary, working to create its utopia." Unquote. Isn't it interesting that right after Zeitgeist promoted the Aquarian New Age concepts in the first Zeitgeist film, the second film, Zeitgeist Addendum, then goes on to convince its followers to strive for a similar Aquarian one world system, new world order called the Venus Project. Indeed, the solution offered by the film Zeitgeist Addendum is that humanity needs to unite into the very same thing that Theosophy and Freemasonry wants it to unite into, a one world universal esoteric brotherhood of humanity, a new world order. I think that the coming new system that the occultists and speak of um, is it's really crucial to understand that what they're talking about is not going to look like what we think the new world order's control grid will look like. They believe that the utopia will be one uh, uh, of a spiritual utopia, one that's free of wars and religion. It's easy for a lot of people to have idealistic views about it. They're going to make it sound wonderful, uh, which is what like the Zeitgeist Addendum particularly does in the second part, where they talk about, oh, we're going to, um, we're going to like you know, have free energy. We're going to provide your needs. Uh, there's been talk about erasing all debts. That's more. The, the Venus Project is more what uh, is it Jacques Vallée? Jacques Fresco. Jacques Fresco. That's more what he's into. Okay, this is this is his utopian approach to um, the New World Order, where I literally heard him say on the addendum where he said, we'll have no laws. All laws will be done away with. I thought to myself, all laws? I mean, nobody's going to have to work. It's just going to sound like wonderful. I mean, he's talking about how are people going to make movies? Well, you won't have to, and you can do whatever you want. And if you make a painting, you can give it to some. I mean, this this utopian world, but it's going to come at an extremely high price regarding the mark of the beast. It's not going to be what they're, they're cracking it up to be. And most likely, it's only going to come with massive depopulation. And they're going to 
probably try to pull that off a number of different ways. But you have the zeitgeist, uh, this utopian approach, and then you also have the way the ascended master, some of the ascended master say, will be done through a pro through a uh, project called Nasera, which you know is very similar in what the zeitgeist zeitgeist addenda talks about it's just kind of a different flavor of it all so which one they're actually going to be able to pull off it's up if the lord lets them do it um it's kind of up to the lord I, it's hard to say which one which one they're actually going to be able to pull off it's up if the lord lets them do it um it's kind of up to the lord I, it's hard to say which way it'll go the venus project looks like um francis bacon's new atlantis this concept that has been with uh the occult realm for a long time uh, whether they call it the New Atlantis or whether they call it some coming utopia or the you know some platonic um, version of the new age, the new world order, a lot of people those terms were viewed uh, in a completely different context that I think a lot of us in the truth movement see the new world order. It's a totally different thing that they're hoping will happen, and I think that we can be in danger if we think that the new world order is just going to be a, a police state control grid, which I think it will be, but I think it will be in the context of a lot of uh, supernatural things going on. So it's going to look like the old, order, old, old world, world order is gone, and in doing so it's going to be exactly what those like Francis Bacon and, and, and all the others have, uh, have mentioned. This new world order is going to be proposed to look just like the Venus Project, but I can tell you that that, that, that won't be the case for very long. It might be right at the beginning, but, but not as it goes on. According to the New Agers, Theosophists, as well as many elitists and Freemasons, there exists a group of highly evolved men and women called the Masters of Wisdom. These powerful groups claim that Buddha, Krishna, Muhammad, and Jesus were all Masters of Wisdom, and that a being named Maitreya is the leader of these beings, who in turn is subject to the true leader, Sanat Kumra. New Age Theosophist Dane Rudhar concedes that the leader of the masters, Sanat Kumra, is in fact Satan, according to the esotericists. Quote, Satan is an anagram for Sanat Kumra, who in the esoteric philosophy of India is the Prometheon being who gave mankind the fire of self-conscious and independent individual selfhood. Unquote. John Michael Greer in the New Encyclopedia of the Occult notes, quote, Satan has a possible echo in theosophic lore, where the Lord of the world, the spiritual ruler of the earth, and the head of the Great White Lodge is Sanat Kumra, a lord of the flame who descended to earth from Venus in a fiery chariot some six million years ago." Unquote. Helena Blavatsky taught her students that it is actually Satan who is God, the Messiah, and that Jehovah is the evil one, she stated, quote, it is but natural, even from the dead letter standpoint, to view Satan, the serpent of Genesis, as the real creator and benefactor, the father of spiritual mankind. For it is he who was the harborer of light, bright radiant Lucifer, who opened the eyes of the automation created by Jehovah, as alleged, and he who was the first to whisper, In the day ye eat thereof, ye shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil, can only be regarded in the light of a savior and adversary to Jehovah, the personating spirit. He still remains in esoteric truth, the ever-loving messenger, the angel, the seraphim and cherubim, who both knew well and loved still more, and who conferred on us spiritual instead of physical immortality. The theosophist H. Alexander Fusel seeks to deify Satan, quote, Satan, then, was originally a divine being destined to carry light and life to the netherworlds. He stands for the gift of free will and self-conscious mind to man, a power which at once seduces and uplifts man, for with free will comes the power to go astray. Satan is therefore man's teacher." Unquote. Once you are willing to give worship to Satan is when you are given a certain kind of power that the deceived, those that are just thinking it's them or thinking that something else, can't have access to. So Freemasonry is a, is a systematic way to get people to that level without, uh, without actually just coming out and saying it right at first. One of the former leaders of the Theosophical Society, who was contemporary with Blavatsky and Annie Besant, tells us what the 19th century position on Satan is. 
In his work Spiritualism, Madame Blavatsky, and Theosophy, Rudolf Steiner states, quote, Lucifer is not a being that we can see with our present day physical eyes. Lucifer can be seen only with the awakened clairvoyance. Seen clairvoyantly, in fact, Lucifer is a particular being who was left behind during the moon phase of evolution." Unquote. N. Sri Ram, who often gave lectures at the United Nations, a major theosophist and writer for Lucifer magazine, clarifies, quote, The adversary, or Satan, is no other than Lucifer, the light bearer, the bright morning star. He is the initiator, awakening the divine faculties of intellect on man. He is the king of the fallen angels, spirits from higher spheres, who descended among primitive mankind of the third race to develop in man and endow him with his self-conscious mind or manis." Unquote. Theosophy teaches that Satan or Lucifer is actually a divine being who saves humankind and brings him consciousness. Many modern influential New Agers who were deceived by Theosophy repeat the same theme. David Spangler admits that Lucifer is a being that New Agers honor and the light of Lucifer is the light of God. Quote, the true light of Lucifer cannot be seen through sorrow, through darkness, through rejection. The true light of this great being can only be recognized when one's own eyes can see with the light of the Christ, the light of the inner sun. Lucifer works within each of us trying to bring us to wholeness. And as we move into a new age, which is the age of man's wholeness, each of us in some way is brought to that point which I term the Luciferic initiation the particular doorway through which the individual must pass if he is to come fully into the presence of his light and his wholeness. Lucifer comes to give us the final gift of wholeness. If we accept it, then he is free and we are free. That is the Luciferic initiation. It is one that many people now and in the days ahead will be facing, for it is an initiation into the new age. It is an initiation of leaving the past and moving into the new shedding our guilts and fears, our anxieties, our needs, our temptations, and becoming whole and at peace because we have recognized our inner light and the light that enfolds us, the light of God." Unquote. So indeed the Luciferian doctrine is fused into the New Age movement due to Theosophy. Along with this doctrine is the belief that because of Satan, man is now thinking. He will evolve, conquer the world, conquer nature, and become a god. The Freemason W. L. Wilmhurst bolstered the fact that Freemasonry is aimed at creating God-men. The purpose of initiation is attaining Godhood, he states, quote, The height of the Lodge, even as high as the heavens, implies the range of consciousness possible to us. When we have developed our potentialities to the full is infinite. Man who has sprung from the earth and developed through the lower kingdoms of nature to his present rational state has yet to complete his evolution by becoming a godlike being and unifying his consciousness with the omniscient to promote which is and always has been the sole aim and purpose of all initiation." Unquote. Danny Nagelwood, you're on the air, go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah you're going to take this the wrong way, Peter J, director of uh, Zeitgeist, but uh, what you just said sounds exactly like Satanism, not saying that you are satanic. I don't believe in Satanism. You, if you want you to know, you know you know that's your own You know what Satanism is? Atheists. People who do not believe in a God. People who believe that man is a God. That's yeah, what Satanism is. You are God. Okay, then you are a Satanist. You are God. You are God. You are God. Okay, uh, can you tell us about Benjamin Krem, uh, Maitreya, and the Ascended Masters? Okay, well, Benjamin Krem was born in 1922, and uh, in 1959 he was contacted by one of the uh, Masters, uh, Ascended Masters. They don't really get real specific who actually contacted him first, but uh, what they did is, is asked him if he wanted to participate in this coming, uh, where he would actually talk about and be kind of like the John the Baptist for becoming uh, Maitreya, as they called him. And he accepted, and in 1975, he started Share International, which is kind of like the mouthpiece for uh, who they call Lord Maitreya. 
and in 1977, Matreya actually made 